Little by little, this rogue Supreme Court has been dismantling American democracy. And up until this point, I would have argued that it's just been death by a thousand cuts. But today, this actually feels like a death blow to American democracy because they just released the decision that says presidents are literally above the law and they have absolute immunity as if they're kings. It is horrifying, and it's putting us on a steady path towards dictatorship. And on top of that, they had to Trump a massive gift in doing this. This is about him. But now those cases against him by Jack Smith and Fonnie Willis, they're now in limbo because of this decision. So there's a lot to talk about with regard to this case. But before I dive into that, I do want to recommend other articles from different Supreme Court cases that I didn't get to talk about in other videos. So the first is a write-up by Jake Johnson about another recent Supreme Court rule where they scrapped the Chevron Doctrine established in 1984 that says that vague regulations should be interpreted by federal agencies and not courts. And this court is now saying, actually, we're no longer going to defer to these federal agencies to interpret vague laws. We're going to be the ones to do that. Now, that might sound like an innocuous change at first, but the implications of this are so vast that it's difficult to really explain how vast this is. So for example, let's say that, you know, there's a particular law that isn't clear in a very narrow area. I mean, a lot of regulations, environmental regulations, for example, don't outline every conceivable change with the utmost specificity. And whenever that was the case, if there was an open question, federal agencies with experts there would make the determinations. That was the Chevron doctrine. So suppose a law was passed saying that you can't dump toxic waste in a river. Bad example, but bear with me. And a corporation saw that law and said, well, you know what? I don't like that law. They can nuance troll and try to find some gray area in that law and argue that it's too vague because they don't specify specifically, you know, how close you can dump toxic waste to a river, for example, or it doesn't say, you know, how far away you have to be and doesn't say what type of waste or if maybe you can dump toxic waste if you put you know, in a package with a bow, some dumb bullshit like that. But the Chevron Doctrine basically allowed experts at agencies to answer these questions for that corporation. But now that's dead. Courts who are not experts on these matters, they're going to be the ones answering these questions. So, for example, if there's any confusion about a particular corporation wanting to dump toxic waste, but it's illegal, they can sue the agency and try to get a corrupt judge to strike down that regulation altogether. It opens the door to the unraveling of so many regulations. And I can't overstate how disastrous this will be, especially for the environment, because now anything that they don't like they can say, well, that law looks vague because of X, Y, Z. Let's uh, sue. Let's challenge that. That law looks vague. Let's challenge that too. It is opening Pandora's box and it just makes mitigating climate change a lot more difficult. Now, another article that I want to recommend is by Katya Schwenk of Jacobin, who explains another 6-3 decision from the Supreme Court that legalizes bribery. But there's a catch. As long as the gift is given to politicians after the corrupt deed has been carried out, then it's fine. In other words, corporations and rich people can now tip politicians for doing their bidding. Now, there's more to it than that, which is why I'm recommending the article since we don't have time to get into it. But if you thought that corruption was already an issue in American politics, it's about to get a lot worse. And they also just released another major ruling that lets cities ban unhoused people from sleeping outside. Cities don't have to provide them with housing if they're going to ban them from sleeping outside. They can, I guess, just shoot them away. It's extremely cruel. And um, yeah, the story that I'll link to is from AP. They're going to talk about this despicable decision. And I wish I had more time to talk about all of these cases, but I think that those articles do a sufficient job at summarizing the details. With that being said, let's get into the Trump v. United States case, because this is a big one. This is one of the most consequential cases in Supreme Court history. So this all stems from Trump's criminal cases, of course, and his attorney sued to get Jack Smith's case against him dismissed, arguing that the president has total immunity. Now, this was mostly a delay tactic, because I don't think that they thought that these dumb arguments they're making would actually have any sway, but the goal was just to delay as far as possible back, you know, so that way there's no answer before the election. Because what they're arguing is so extreme that I, I can't imagine that a lawyer 
is actually believing that this is going to fly. You know, sure, the president has immunity to an extent that's been long established, but no one is above the law, or so we thought. Now, after a lower court rejected Trump's immunity claim, they appealed to the circuit court where they made the same argument, and the argument Trump's lawyers were making was so stupid that a judge asked them a hypothetical to kind of demonstrate the implications of this legal argument that they're making and you might actually remember this because there are headlines about this but let's listen i asked you a yes no yes or no question could a president who ordered seal team six to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached would he be subject to criminal prosecution if he were impeached and convicted first and so, so your answer is is, no. is my answer is qualified yes so the judge was taking the argument from trump's attorney to its logical conclusion. If the president has total immunity, he could virtually get away with anything, including literally assassinating a political rival with SEAL Team 6. Well, guess what? The US Supreme Court just sided with Trump's attorney and agreed that yes, the president actually does have absolute immunity and can do just that. I'm not making this up, I'm gonna say it again. The Supreme Court just said the president has absolute immunity immunity. He is literally above the law. As Mark Joseph Stern of Slate explains, the Supreme Court's conservative supermajority fundamentally altered American democracy on Monday, awarding the president a sweeping and novel immunity when he weaponizes the power of his office for corrupt, violent, or treasonous purposes. The near insurmountable shield against prosecution for crimes committed while in office upends the structure of the federal government, elevating the presidency to a king-like status high above the other branches. The immediate impact of the court sweeping decision will be devastating enough, allowing Donald Trump to evade accountability for the most destructive and criminal efforts he took to overturn the 2020 election. But the long term impact is even more harrowing. It is unclear after Monday's decision what constitutional checks remain to stop any president from assuming dangerous and monarchical powers that are anathema to representative government. As Justice Sonia Sotomayor put it in her terrified and terrifying dissent, quote, the president is now a king above the law. And that right there is not a hyperbole. In her dissenting opinion, Justice Sotomayor explains, quote, the president of the United States is the most powerful person in the country and possibly the world. When he uses his official powers in any way under the majority's reasoning, he now will be insulated from criminal prosecution. Orders the Navy SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? Immune. Organizes a military coup to stay in power? Immune. Takes a bribe in exchange for a pardon? Immune. Immune, immune, immune. That's not Mike from the Humanist Report saying that. That is a justice saying that. So all bets are off. And yes, this is a case about Trump, but this now applies to all presidents. And there's absolutely nothing in the Constitution, by the way, that shields a president from something that's illegal or treasonous. But they made it up for Trump. Now, keep in mind that when it comes to civil rights like abortion, they struck down Roe v. Wade because there's no history or tradition of that right. But when it comes to the president having absolute immunity, that's fine, even though it's not in the Constitution. And there's certainly no history or tradition of that. It is totally arbitrary. And they're literally just making up the rules as they go along. They're not even pretending to follow the Constitution at this point. It's just, well, I like that, but don't like that. I don't like that, uh, so I'll rule this way. Like, that's literally all that they're doing. Now, there's different distinctions here that they draw. There's official acts where the president has absolute immunity, and there's unofficial acts where the president doesn't have immunity. But there's another category of more broad acts where he doesn't necessarily enjoy absolute immunity, but instead has presumptive immunity for acts that fall in the outer perimeter of official acts. It's a lot of legal mumble jumbo and bullshit to just say, look, the president can basically get away with everything. And really, it's up to the courts to determine which acts are official or unofficial. But it's completely arbitrary and totally subjective. So to determine if an act is an unofficial act, a court has to determine if something a president does is part of his official presidential duties or just arbitrary and irrational. And Mark Joseph Stern tweeted an excerpt from the liberals' dissent where they argued that this distinction is basically meaningless. Quote, so one might ask, what remains of accountability for presidents under law? With today's paradigm shift, the majority leaves in place only the chance that this court might someday determine that the criminal conduct in question was an unofficial act or that the government will somehow rebut the presumption of immunity that applies to a president's official acts, such that criminal consequences might attach. But with the parameters of 
official and unofficial conduct unknown, I think it highly unlikely that a sitting president would feel constrained by these remote possibilities. And that's kind of the point, right? A president now going forward can do whatever because they know the chances of them being held accountable is so small that they can get away with basically everything. And that's key here because with regard to Trump, they explicitly concluded in this case that Trump's coup attempt did fall under the designation of an official act of a president. Not fucking joking. So here's the conclusions that they reached. Stern continues, quote, At the heart of Jack Smith's case are allegations that Trump tried to coerce the Department of Justice into interfering with the 2020 election, threatening sham investigations and wielding the agency's power to cow swing states into changing their results. These charges are critically important to Smith's case. They show a president abusing the tools of his office in a desperate bid to remain in power, arguably the highest possible betrayal of the public trust. Yet Roberts declared that this coercion amounted to an official act that is absolutely immune from prosecution. Notably, if Trump had succeeded, in using his DOJ to flip the results of the election, he would have been absolutely immune from criminal prosecution for a successful coup. Roberts also granted presumptive immunity to many other acts in the indictment. Into this category, he placed Trump's browbeating of Vice President Mike Pence to reject swing states' electoral votes on January 6th because he did not wish to chill the president's ability to discuss official matters with the vice president or hinder the president's ability to perform his constitutional functions. Smith now bears the burden of rebutting this presumption of immunity immunity by somehow showing that prosecution of this conduct does not pose dangers of intrusion on the authority and functions of the executive branch. The Chief Justice's rhetoric in this passage suggests that he does not believe Smith can meet that high standard. He lumped a ton of other conduct into this category too, including the use of his bully pulpit to demand the rejection of electoral votes and foment the insurrection on January 6th. In other words, the president can literally do almost whatever the fuck he wants now. And the only reason why I say almost is because the same court doesn't believe that the president has the authority to, say, cancel our student debt, but he does have the power to stage a coup. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Very normal Supreme Court. Actually, Trump's coup wasn't actually a coup. It was an official act of the president, wink, wink. It just feels like we're living in a parody. But when it comes to all of Trump's other cases, well... Guess what? They're all now in limbo, and um, it's bad. As Axios explains, in Trump's classified documents case, the judge now has to determine whether or not Trump's acts were official or unofficial, and elements of the case against Trump are probably going to have to be tweaked or dropped altogether because of this decision. And when it comes to the Georgia election case, the same is going to have to be done. But the Supreme Court said that they couldn't, quote, neatly determine if Trump telling the Secretary of State to find votes constituted an official or unofficial act. So at a minimum, the cases against Trump are going to be delayed and we're not going to get a verdict until after this election. But at most, there's a good chance that the Supreme Court just saved his ass entirely. And of course, he is extremely happy about this. On Truth Social, he tweeted, Big win for our Constitution and democracy. Proud to be an American. Oh, I bet he is. The Supreme Court totally dismantled most of the charges against me. Joe Biden should now call off his dogs. Our country should now be focused on greatness again. And finally, this one is interesting because he almost seemed surprised that they went this far. Quote, the Supreme Court decision is a much more powerful one than some had expected it to be. Yeah, no shit. And he's not wrong. But guess what? Even though this affects Trump the most in the short term, this also applies to all presidents. So if Biden wanted to, he could drone strike Trump and even a couple of Supreme Court justices now if he wanted to, because they just gave the president's absolute immunity. They can now do whatever the fuck they want, and they don't realize that. Now, of course, Biden is not going to do any of that. But if he wanted to, you know, he would be immune so long as he argued that that was an official act. That's what they set up. So if Trump supporters were worried about Biden weaponizing the Department of Justice to go after Donald Trump, well, Biden now has the power to assassinate Trump using SEAL Team 6, literally, because all presidents are now above the law thanks to this decision that was made at the behest of Donald Trump. But see, Trump supporters and Republicans don't understand that, though, and Trump supporters literally only support the concept of immunity for a president that's absolute so long as it's Donald Trump. But they don't support that for other presidents, and I'm not joking about this. Harry Anton of CNN breaks down a poll 
that shows how they feel about immunity. Trump have criminal immunity for his official acts as president. We've been looking at this polling over and over and over again as this case has made its way up to the Supreme Court. And what we've consistently found is that no, no is in the majority here. 60% of Americans say no, just 30% say yes. This is true basically across the entire political aisle. Only Republicans believe in the yes on this particular one. Although I will note, John, that in fact, if you take Trump's out of the equation, you just say, should a generic president have criminal immunity for his official access president? Even in that particular case, Republicans say no. It's just right here when you attach Trump's name to it. Of course, Republicans are going to jump over and say yes. Oh, that's interesting. So this number is actually higher. Yes. With Trump in the equation. Correct. Because Republicans all of a sudden say, well, I have to take Trump's side. But if it were a generic president, they would jump over. It doesn't work that way, but thanks to Trump, all future presidents have absolute immunity. So if he fails to become a dictator, it's only a matter of time before we get a different scumbag who uh, wants to be a dictator and executes that plan because of this case. And I don't want to hear any Republican ever again complain about Biden or other Democratic presidents, you know, abusing power after this, because they are the ones who turned presidents into kings all at the behest of Donald Trump. But now that the court just gave Biden absolute immunity, he should use that newfound power to reign in this rogue court. Pack it, abolish it, I don't care. But this court is literally destroying American democracy, and Democrats need to do everything they can to stop them from doing more harm to us. But we know that's not going to happen. They're not going to do shit. So if Trump ends up getting elected, he will assume office knowing he's immune from virtually any crimes that he intends on committing. And... It's going to get ugly really, really fast. So this is an absolute nightmare of a decision, and America is truly on the cusp of a full-blown dictatorship because of it. So we're up shit creek without a paddle, and it's only downhill from here. It's all, it's all going to get worse. So um, buckle up, folks, because this is one of many terrible rulings to come out of this court. And, uh, you know, we'll see what they have in store for us next year. Can't wait. Come. Uh, uh, do not come. 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 Welcome, Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. 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 Come.